welcome Paul to Pokewater interview. Thank you, Kristen. Uh, really glad to be here. Mm. It's honored to have you join us for this interview today to discuss the DAI project in depth. Uh, DAI is an open source Oracle platform for Web3, which provides fully customer customer right uh, customizable data feeds for smart contract and the DAI offers high quality real time and verifiable data streams and which which pro provide uh, reliable information uh, infrastructure for blockchain applications in this interview uh, we will explore DAI's technical features use cases and the future develop uh, future development directions and uh, firstly, let's establish some basic information for our interview. And could you please briefly introduce yourself and the, the DAI project? Yeah, love to. Thanks, Kristen. So my name is Paul. I'm one of the co-founders of DIA or DIER. Um, depends really on, I guess, the region, how to pronounce it. Feel free to pronounce it however you want to. We founded DIA in um, 2018. Uh, with the belief uh, in a cross-chain, uh, multi-chain ecosystem and that oracles back then and um, weren't really um, providing the right architecture for mm -hmm. uh, cross-chain use cases. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm in charge of business development at DIA and um, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to the interview and, and tell you more what we're doing. Yeah, amazing. And moving to our first major topic, let's talk about the technical features or advantages of DAI. Uh, actually, before our interview, I asked, you know, uh, chat GPT a question about who is the best Oracle in blockchain industry? And the answer was Chainlink. <laughs> uh, I, believe, <laughs> I believe this is a widely held impression among many people in blockchain industry. So let's start by breaking this impression and uh, we can start by comparing the advantages of dia as a oracle to those of chaining yeah i'm i'm pretty sure uh, with the with uh, the fast development in uh, mmls and ai i think we'll we'll get a different answer i don't know in 6 to 12 months um, which will be more nuanced but um but yeah um, let's be frank i think uh, chaining did did a lot for the general education on uh, what an Oracle is in the space and um, is providing a, a very nice product. So we're happy to be peers among them and also with other Oracles out there, um, because I think it's really important um, to also have the choice uh, between different solutions and they have different advantages. Mm -hmm. um, our architecture really differentiates um, from from the from the one, for example, Chainlink provides. So while Chainlink is using pre-aggregated data and bringing this to some on-chain consensus, we're taking a different approach, which we believe is more catered to a cross-chain um, ecosystem, which is very transparent. Something we felt which was missing, mm -hmm. um, and we're integrated into the individual sources where actual trades happen. So we are pulling data directly from centralized exchanges, but also from various DEXs on, on different chains. Mm -hmm. And then we have the ability to have single trades and um, use different methodologies to compute price points and different time windows. So this enables us to have um, the highest transparency, which is, I think, unmet in the space on the origination of the underlying data for price feed. And it also uh, enables us to go much more long tail because we have the underlying data and not just uh, an aggregated uh, data set. So I think this is a core differentiator and this is um this is yeah for for a lot of use cases very beneficial um and it enables us not only um yeah to to this unmet level of transparency but we can also build ecosystem specific price feeds so for example in polkadot uh on within either polkadot or a specific power chain we can aggregate trades on the prevalent dexes and build a price sheet there um, but we can also use price feeds from other chains for bridge tokens. So this is something where we have, a, a, I think, a unique product in the space. Wow, amazing. We know that Chainlink has a significant market share, but we don't have a specific, uh, a specific data to qualify it, to quantify it. Uh, is there anything that sets DIA apart from Chainlink in terms of uh, market share? Uh, what is the global market share and the use basis of DIA platform? 
Yeah, so I, I think a global market share is is hard to assess. Chainlink is um, the most utilized Oracle, so there's no uh, arguing around that. But um, we're cross-chain uh, Oracle, so we are present in more than on more than 35 different ecosystems, which is I think unmet. So there's no other Oracle providing a price fix on the more ecosystems than Dia does. Mm -hmm. And we're also in certain ecosystems the um, the most used Oracle. So we have a very strong um, positioning in the Polkadot ecosystem mm -hmm. um, for there. We are on most of the power chains uh, on, on Polkadot, A-Star, Moon River, uh, like more or less like all, yeah, all of them, I'd say. Mm -hmm. um, and we we are integrated with most applications there. So for A-Star, we're on Starlay, SIL2, Algem, Astrodal, Orcus, mm -hmm. Starfish, Rikai, Arca, um, we integrate with Midas, um, we're providing stake dog feeds on, um, um, on Moon River, uh, Moonbeam. Um, so I think uh, when it comes to market share within the Polkadot ecosystem, we are very um, well positioned, for example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I think out of the Polkadot uh, market, we have to use the inter interoperability. And usually interoperability between blockchains is achieved through bridging uh, regarding oracles as a multi-chain oracle platform. Has DIA played an important role in the multi-chain interoper interoperability? Yeah, I think it's, I mean, it's an early topic. Um, so multi-chain is now transitioning into cross-chain. So not there's not just a bunch of chains, but all these uh, mm -hmm. chains uh, are being more interconnected. Mm -hmm. And um, and again, we are the only ones who can provide chain-specific price feeds, mm -hmm. and we can also bridge them. And we're seeing obviously a demand changing um, for cross-chain use cases, which goes um, beyond just a price feed, mm -hmm. but also accessing our tokens actually present there. And I think all these chain, uh, all these um, bridge hacks in the past uh, have shown that there's, uh, there is a demand for more transparency and mitigating risk. And we are working on products which will um, enable yeah, a safer, um, usage and hence higher adoption of cross-chain use cases um, in our role as an oracle going beyond just price feeds. Mm -hmm. And um, it will be a, yeah, a Polkadot specific product also. Can't, can't disclose it now, but um, uh, I think we'll, we'll be able to, to share more information on this very shortly. Yeah, looking forward to it. And uh, uh, we use blockchain mainly because uh, it has characteristics like t uh, decentralization and the transparency. The smart contract on the blockchain can also obtain data from off-chain sources, but every node on the blockchain needs to access the same data to reach a uh, consensus. Uh, however, data is constantly changing uh, every second. Therefore, we introduced Oracle as a way to provide decentralized and transparent data to the blockchain. Uh, you know, if the transparency and the decentralization of data can't be guaranteed, blockchain will lose its meaning. Uh, will lose its meaning. So, uh, can you explain to us? Uh, how DIA how DIA works and how it uh, addresses the issue of data uh, manip manipulation and and the tempering. Yeah, so we believe um, it's extremely important to have transparency on where data originates from. So this is really something which sets us apart. So when we're using DIA price feeds, you have complete transparency where the data actually originates from. Mm -hmm. What methodology has been applied to, for example, using a volume weighted average and outlier cleaning. So with an interquarter range using an outlier and hence mitigating possibly mm -hmm. um, wrong trades and not including them. And then uh, providing um, these data feeds on more than 35 chains. And uh, I think this transparency um, is the best way to, um, to mitigate potential manipulations. Um, and it's the foundation um, to make um, to uh, provide um, trust in in solutions. Mm, yeah, transparency makes everything possible. <laughs> and uh, uh, security is a topic that has been talked about uh, has has been talked about uh, extensively 
but it's crucial important. So could you share how DIRT, how DIRT ensures security uh, to maintain system stability and the real, uh, reliability? Yeah, so um, I think it is of vital importance to ensure that price feeds operate as intended. So we're investing a lot of resources in risk monitoring. Mm -hmm. um, and this starts from basically the initial request of data. Um, so um, when somebody requests a price feed, uh, mm -hmm. as we have the underlying data, we understand well how how risky are these price feeds. So how many markets are providing that data? Is it only one or ideally and one is one is not great, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, depending on the use case. For example, if a price feed is used in a lending market to um, provide uh, the information of a collateral value, we would want to see um, two to three markets at least. And um, if these markets, then maybe they're centralized exchanges, maybe they're DEXs, ideally they're a combination. Why? Because centralized exchanges create a lot of trades. So we have a lot of ticks we can use to build a price fix. So that's great. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, they are, they are less transparent than a DEX. Nobody can like perfectly verify that these trades actually occurred. Um, while uh, a DEX is highly impacted by the amount of TVL in a given pool. So uh, we need to see how deep is the uh, liquidity of the lowest um, uh, pool. Uh, and we're taking all this information and, uh, and we're um, building risk scores based on that information. And uh, by this, we can ensure that um, an end user really understands, okay, I'm using here a lending market mm -hmm. for, and certain assets are accepted. And these assets rely on price fees, which are based on these markets uh, and these methodologies and so on. And by this, we're yeah, again, creating transparency, um, making sure people understand the risk and um, apart from, from the given transparency, we are constantly monitoring these feeds. So do markets actually report trades? Are TVLs changing? Um, are, is node infrastructure running? Are prices updating? So uh, a large part of our work is really trying to mitigate risk and monitor our tooling um, so there are no incidents. Hmm. Okay. Oh. Uh... DIA has launched a variety of dApps uh, targeting specific scenarios, such as NFTs, DeFi. So what distinguish the use, use of Oracle among them? A... Um, yeah, so we, we're, we're trying. So I think what's exciting about Web3 use cases are, are I think, broadening, uh, obviously, all the time. And while we started with price fees for fungible tokens and um, building here really the best product we, we believe from um, to serve these needs, um, new primitives emerged, such as uh, NFTs, where we then um, started to build um, floor prices for basically any collection out there, no matter if they're traded in OpenSea, Y2K2, um, or Tofu, or LuxRare, uh, you name it, um, and providing um, floor prices to build NFT Fi primitives with these. Uh, at the same time, we collaborated with DRAND, which has been um, which has been founded from yeah, people around the Protocol Labs team, uh, providing randomness to enable different web free gaming primitives. Um, so uh, application use cases um, change all the time. I think the latest product uh, we just released, which um, empowers a new, I guess, um, the new ability of using liquid stake derivatives, for example, ST dot from Lido, but uh, also an A star from Algem to be used as collateral uh, in lending markets or for option protocols, CSDs. So um, I think, yeah, we are already today covering um, a broad range of different um, products to enable different um, web free applications, but this is obviously growing um, uh, constantly. Mm. And uh, uh, use cases is changing, and uh, you have to do a lot of a lot of work, you know, to 
to apply to these changes. So uh, what is the most crucial aspect in designing an oracle? And what dimensions uh, should we consider when evaluating uh, which oracle provides the best data supply for a, uh, for a particular scenario? Yeah, I think, um, again, it's great to not only have us as uh, the only solution out there, but there are different oracles, they have different architectures, and uh, one might be better than the other for specific use cases. Mm -hmm. So where we believe we can provide a lot of value um, is when an application values trans uh, transparency, accessibility, it's very easy to get our price fees on more than 35 chains, mm -hmm. and when accuracy as well as risk mitigation and constant monitoring are necessary. So um, these are, I guess, requirements um, a lot of devs luckily have and where we can provide a great product. Um, and that's especially the case when it comes to more um, to, I guess, more sophisticated assets. So not only uh, an eFuse D feed, but um, assets which are traded just on certain ecosystems, bridge them to others, so cross-chain use cases, or again, liquid stake derivatives, where we are not only looking at the market price, so um, and building a price sheet based on previous trades, mm -hmm. but where we're actually looking at concrete stakes uh, and um, monitoring that liquid stake derivative protocols are sufficiently collateralized by the underlying asset. So a stake dot fee is the sufficient dot in the LIDO contract for it or not, and dynamically repricing um, um, the price of uh, the ST dot. Um, so I think um, if you have, if you really want to push the the, the boundaries uh, at building new DeFi primitives, um, we will the go to shop, and um, especially if you're building those in, in new ecosystems. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, in your opinion, what are some other potential use cases for oracles, or uh, what's your favorite, uh, you know, uh, uh, use cases? I mean, I think my favorite use cases are somehow DeFi uh, related. So I'm, I'm, uh, and especially cross chain use cases. So I think that's the kind of the benefit of a beer market. Um, mm -hmm. We have the privilege of working with teams which are building. I don't know if you call it now DeFi 3.0 in the future, but building really new primitives and products which go beyond just forking, um, I don't know, R for compound and deploying it on new chain. So I personally, I'm quite excited how, how these new DeFi um, applications, when they'll be released. Um, at the same time, obviously, uh, we're, we're growing also beyond DeFi. So I think we'll probably see a lot of uh, traction um, when it comes to real world ethics um, mm -hmm. and maybe real world ethics being represented by an NFT um, and um, yeah, utilizing yields generated in the traditional financial markets or alternative assets and using them as collateral on-chain. And here again, uh, I think we are uh, we at DIR are uniquely positioned to provide value accrual for such assets um, to make them accessible um, in some financial primitives on-chain. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, I think there's there's also some some exciting development in, in web free gaming, um, where uh, yeah, with randomness, we are providing one set of tooling, but uh, there's more to come. So um, yeah, luckily, um, I think these these beer markets, um, there's no there's no value for people to ship something fast, but there's value in people to spend some time building something really um, really new and innovative, and that's that's what we're seeing currently. Okay, and uh, let's discuss the future development directions of the. Uh, so, uh, what are the uh, prospects for Oracle development, and how will it impact the applications and development of blockchain in technology? So, I think the the role of an Oracle will be more than just a price feed, and we see this because we are building these products um, and. Um, security and monitoring are becoming more relevant um, and not only something I think oracles internally use, but something to be exposed for, for everyone easily to access. Um, so um, oracles will, in my opinion, move beyond price fees. I think a lot of oracles will probably follow us in being uh, cross-chain present um, and 
not just on a on a handful of ecosystems, but creating accessibility um, across the web free stack um, and um, providing additional tooling which uh, which makes cross chain use cases more secure. Okay. And for sure, also providing mm -hmm. providing information from from off chain real world assets and making them transparent and and secure for on chain use cases. Mm. And uh, 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 could you please provide a roadmap of what we can expect from DIRT in twenty twenty three? Yeah. Um, again risk monitoring um, and making this accessible um, for the end user so you really understand what risk you are having when you're using uh, when you're using a dap uh, which relies on our price fees um, something i find extremely important um, more tooling for cross-chain use cases um, as well as higher accessibility so broadening and expanding in even more ecosystems i mean um, we are unmet in um in the ability to access our oracles but um there are a lot of very interesting l1s and l2s uh, being deployed that specific chains and we have an architecture which is um, perfectly positioned to serve all these new emerging ecosystems mm -hmm. and at the same time we feel that so currently we have a process where people can request our price fix through our forum. So there's a high level of transparency. People see what has been requested, what has been delivered, what's the underlying data. But we feel we can push this even further to make it uh, self-servicing. So people can, anyone can just with a couple of clicks uh, uh, um, deploy the Oracle specifically how they need it. Mm. Uh, how can ordinary users participate in and contribute to the art platform? Yeah, I think, um, again, here uh, we set ourselves just a bit apart from, from our peers. Um, we founded DIA in 2018 as a DAO, which was, I, I guess, back then still rather unusual. Today, I think that's an organizational format, which is... Um, highly utilized for, for good reasons. But even like back then, like from our inception, we've been using Gitcoin as, as like an early uh, user to build certain parts of our infrastructure. And that's something we, we continue to do and across different, I guess, um, areas within DIA. So we have uh, with, a, with a DIA Discord server where we have different guilds, so tech guild, BD guild, content, marketing, and so on where we have uh, various contributors um, working um, on on the DIA mission. So uh, I can only invite everyone to join our server. So maybe we can just link this in, in the description here uh, and um, participate in a community call, learn more what we're doing. Um, there are a bunch of bounties. Um, so feel free to just pick one and, and work on that. Um, so yeah, there, there are various forms of how you can contribute and work depending on your skill set and and uh, how much time you have. But a great way to start is um, to to join our Discord server um, and and meet other contributors in the team. Okay, uh, thank you for joining us today to discuss the Dear project in depth. Uh, it was honor to have you as our guest. Throughout the interview, we gained valuable insight to DIA's technical features, use cases, and the future development directions. And uh, thank you for sharing your insight and knowledge with us. Thank you, Kristen. It was really a pleasure to be here, and thank you for your time.